What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Neo, Tesla, Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. And break down what's happening with the overall market thus far, as the market's building up for a big squeeze for next week, in my personal opinion. What you should be watching for as time progresses. But before I begin the devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you are guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000, you are guaranteed 75 of them. And offer ends very soon, in just about three weeks from now. Anyways, for Neo, I just want to mention that Neo has been on a very, very interesting trend. We saw this thing get two nice pumps to the upside, but we're getting a little bit of a decline. But it held this support very nicely, where this imbalance happens to be right over here. After holding this support, Neo has been uptrending once again, approaching a very, very key level. And we're actually showing a lot of strength, in my personal opinion. That's a very, very good sign for Neo because the strength that's building is going to help it quite a bit. And I wanted to make it very, very clear that for the way the market's looking, Neo has a nice catalyst that's going to likely be coming up. Now, for news and such, I want to make it very clear that as long as we don't get bad news for Neo over the weekend, we should be getting a nice move to the upside, most likely, based off what I'm seeing in data. So I'm going to break down exactly why that is. Today, the PC data came out. We had a very crazy day in the markets. The markets pumped, and they had a big dump, followed by an end of the day massive squeeze. So the market went back and forth and back and forth all day. Very tricky. But once again, the bulls did prevail as we predicted. Look at SPY, we're up almost 1% for the day. We came down. Uh, we basically pumped all the way up to about 525, dumped to 518, then we pumped back up to about 528. <laughs> Pretty crazy stuff in a single day. And we have this gap to fill above, so there is going to likely be more upside coming. I think we're going to be approaching the all-time high all over again, if not breaking to a new one. Also, the market is looking bullish, so this could be a little bit more positive for NEO. The market was about to get fearful. Now we're just back to neutral. This opens more room for us to continue to push to all-time highs, and we're just going to barely be at greed, which allows for more and more potential upside. Market, <coughs> excuse me, market momentum is still greedy. The puts and call option positioning showed people were buying all these puts only for them to be squeezed at the end of the week, and we're going to be likely seeing this dip a bit as we're going to see more call buying. The VIX is going to likely get a rejection. That has a couple of gaps to fill. Once again, the market has more upside potential, in my opinion. For other factors, Neil uh, has made it very, very clear that they're going to get a lot more investments from different uh, bodies in China, which will help them gain a lot of exposure and improve uh, their battery swapping technology. On top of this, when it comes to earnings, please know that there's not a whole lot of earnings coming out for the week, lots of retail and such. But for Thursday, Neo has their earnings before the market ends up opening. So that's going to be very, very important. And on top of all of this, uh, Neo's power unit secures the first external investment. This has been good news for them as well. Uh, you guys can see right over here as many investors are betting on uh, additional capital flowing into the name of Neo and an external $207 million investment coming from the Chinese venture, venture capital is significantly boosting the stock, which is good news for them. More and more investments are being made. And another thing I just wanted to call out is that this is what I mentioned earlier. Neo did 15,600 deliveries for the month of April. For May, from the 1st through the 26th, we did 15,400 deliveries. So in the last five days of May, the last days today, obviously, I think Neil will easily break their record and get close to about 17,000 plus deliveries, if not 17,500. And they're going to make the big announcement possibly over the weekend, which means that by Monday, we should be looking for a big move in the share price, likely to the upside. I do favor that a little bit more as we have an imbalance to fill up here. And we kind of have a very, very nice looking... This kind of looks like a cup and handle, maybe not a perfect one. Maybe a slanted inverse and shoulder slash cup and handle. So I could be looking for a push to the upside as you approach these highs. So in my opinion, I think it's going to be, <laughs> excuse me, it's going to be very, very cool. I can't wait for what else the future holds. So very, very awesome stuff. Going into Monday, we have some PMI data coming in at 945. We have the uh, manufacturing PMI. We have the ISM manufacturing PMI after that. On Tuesday, we have the economic optimism reports, some Jolt's job openings numbers. Uh, then more uh, uh, ISM services numbers on Wednesday. Most of the data is not that crazy, so I still think that's going to help the market push higher, and we're going to see a big squeeze anyways. Uh, for NEO, just know that Bank of America Securities gave them a neutral rating. They still have a price target of 5.9, so there's actually more uh, potential upside, and I can't wait to see what else ends up happening. On top of this, I just want, excuse me, I just want to call out that 
We have about 63 million in volume, at least for Neo. Not bad whatsoever. So there is still upside potential. What is my prediction? I think I see an inverse hand and shoulders right here. You could even interpret this as a cup and handle. Either way, I see upside coming most likely for next week. I favor that a bit more. So as long as there's no bad news over the weekend about Neo, we should be good with the deliveries numbers coming up and also earnings approaching. I wouldn't be surprised if we start pushing back up towards the high fives, 5.8 to $6. For SPY, bullish, 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 bullish. We're going to fill this gap to 530 and approach the all-time high pretty easily now. You guys can see it took the bears how many days? One, two, three, three, four days to get us all the way down to 518. It took over about three, four days to get down there, right? It took the bulls one day to get us back up there. It took them like a couple of hours to get back up there. So the bulls are stronger. They're in control. Don't let that fool you. And they're going to continue to push the market higher, in my personal opinion. There's more upside potential. For Tesla, we're still indecisive on Tesla. If we break 180, we could turn bullish and push for 182, 185 and start squeezing higher. But we haven't really done that yet. If we lose 173, we turn bearish. We'll be dipping to fill a gap down to 168. So far, uh, I wouldn't necessarily be too convicted yet because even though we have kind of like a, uh, you know, a head and shoulders like structure, I personally believe that it's very important to note that nothing is like... Um, official, at least for Tesla yet. And we're just completely just range bound. So we have to give this some time just to see how things end up moving. For NVIDIA, we're trying to hold our 20 EMA, 1,092. If we bounce off this and start pushing, we'll be looking for 11, basically 1120 plus. If we lose the support, we could be dipping a little bit lower towards uh, 1,068. Overall, it does look to me like it may rebound just a bit. For Apple, Apple is trying to rebound a bit. Look for 192.5. If we break this, we'll be pushing even higher towards 192.8 or even up here. Uh, if we end up projecting, we could be dipping lower. But in my personal opinion, I think the share price looks more bullish. On top of all of this, I just want to call out that uh, for Amazon, Amazon, my personal opinion, is looking pretty decent. Yes, we are kind of dipping a little bit, but we have to watch out. Uh, watch this 174 support. If we do rebound up this, I could be looking for a test of 178. And then for Meta, same thing. Could be looking for a test of 470 right back to where our uh, 50 EMA happens to be. Look for a little bounce to 470. That's it for everything. AMC and GameStop are showing some life as well with the overall market. Going to be looking for GameStop to try to hold above our support and then start pushing all the way up to about 24 uh, all over again. AMC got a bounce off 4.2, 4.14. So now we're holding it better. If we keep pushing, look for 4.47 again. I think it could try to rebound as long as we hold support. So the market looks like it wants to push higher. The, you know, we're looking like we have a lot of potential. Even Bitcoin is trying to rebound just a bit. Uh, we'll see if this thing tries to get, get up to about 68,000. I do see potential for that. And for NEO, this could all help NEO pump higher, but the bigger factor is going to be deliveries. I think deliveries will help NEO pump. I also believe that um, there shouldn't be too much bad data, hopefully over the weekend, in terms of news for Chinese markets, Chinese EVs and such. So we do favor upside as long as there's no major bad news over the weekend. Okay, so I favor upside. Let's wait for deliveries to come out in a couple of days, and I can't wait for what the future holds. I'll be back on Sunday, guys, for another video update. I'll be taking a break tomorrow. So take care, guys, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you for listening, and peace out.